Okay. So welcome everybody. My name is Mary Bear Shannon. I am uh, uh, I work in the reference department at the Haverford Township Free Library. I do programming uh, and outreach and some communications there. Um, and welcome to our, our, uh, our talk tonight with Darla Damaro about decluttering. Um, we we um, wanted to host this program kind of in January when people are thinking about, you know, turning over a, um, a new leaf and wanting to uh, uh, have some um, kind of a new start on on and and we think clutter is definitely one of those things that people want to do uh, have a kind of a new start. Um, but we're also kind of doing this in uh, the context of kind of caring for yourself. Um, and the library has been doing some things uh, in January to um, to promote self care. Uh, we did have some. Uh, care cubes that we made available to patrons, uh, and we actually had um, uh, uh, quite a few go out. Um, we're also doing a self-care bingo uh, that is still going on. So if you come into the library to the reference desk and you get and you get a full card, you do everything on the card and return it to us by Monday, February fourteenth. You will be entered into our self-care basket, uh, which is uh, provided to us by Positivity Yogis here in Havertown. Uh, they are uh, a wonderful sponsor of the library, and I was so pleased that Gina uh, Pollock was able to put together a basket for us. Um, so it's not too late to pick up your bingo card, uh, fill it out, and get it to us by Monday the 14th, and then we will be doing a drawing for the basket. Um, but anyway, we are so glad to have uh, Darla here today, uh, tonight from uh, Heartwork Organizing. I wanted to tell you a little bit about Darla before we begin, uh, and then we'll get started. Um, so Darla Damara, as I said, her business is Heartwork Organizing, um, which helps people to lead more peaceful and beautiful lives through organizing and design. Um, she's a member of and a trainer for the National Association of Productivity, and organizing professionals and other organizing industry groups. She has some books, uh, include, they include Organizing Your Home with Sort and Succeed. Sort is S-O-R-T capitalized. Um, use brain science and rewards to help you stop feeling overwhelmed. Um, Darla has an MBA and over 30 years of business experience and media, uh, media appearances on NPR, uh, NBC 10 TV, Fox TV, the Oprah, the Oprah Magazine, Forbes, Realtor.com, and many, many others. Um, and Darla helps people find their desktops, their keys, and their sanity. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, both at work and at home. And she's here to help you sort and succeed your way to organizing bliss. So Darla, welcome. Uh, and thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for inviting me in. It's a great group and I am looking forward to sharing what I love and what many of you need. So this is a great partnership here. So um, Mary, can you just confirm you can see my slide? Yes. And you can hear me fine. Yes. So it's all good. Yay. We're starting out well. Okay. So um, thank you for sharing a little bit about me and what we're going to do tonight is to learn about a system that I've created called Sort and Succeed and how that can help you live the life that you want to live. And um, so let's oh, hang on one second. Okay, so I wanna start with this image because it's two ends of the scale. Every bag that goes, that comes in must go out. What does that mean? Well, if you think about uh, good organizing, a lot of times what you're hearing or what you're seeing is, um, Mary, can you see that? Can you see the view and admit on my screen? Or yeah, no? so I, I just, I'm, I'm letting people in okay. as, as they come along. That's fine. I'm just, uh, it's going to pop up here. And that's oh, gonna uh, because be you're the co-host. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, yep, that's, that's fine. Um, I just wanted to know that it's, uh, on both my and, and yeah. your screen. Yes, okay. I'm taking care of it. Gotcha. Thanks. So, um, so I always say good organizing is not about throwing things out. 
It's not about making you lose things or, you know, divesting from your stuff. It's certainly not about becoming a minimalist, which if you can look behind me, this is not a background. It's my real office. I'm not a minimalist. Um, but what good organizing does is to help you help you lead the life that you really want to lead. And it starts in the store. So those shopping carts, which are in the container store, <laughs> uh, which many of us are addicted to, um, everything that comes into your life is going to end up on the other side of the screen. It's in the back of my van being dropped off at Goodwill. <laughs> so our things that we have in our life that we love, that we use, that we keep, they all have a lifespan. And so um, when you're thinking about organizing, it's really what jumps into your cart at Target or what jumps into your online shopping cart because you know eventually it's gonna go out. I had this epiphany myself when I was a young mother and uh, the kids' clothes were coming in and out. You know, I had two kids, they were growing really fast <laughs> as kids do. And, um, you know, I just understood, I, I saw one day the five Target bags coming in the door and I had stuff sitting that had to go in the car to go to Goodwill and you guys know it, right? Because you feel it too. Let's see, I can't really move that out of the way. I'm so sorry. Hmm, I don't think I can do anything about that. It's gonna keep popping up. Um, mm -hmm. So we have a saying, the professional organizers have a saying that you spend the first 40 years of your life acquiring things and the next 40 years of your life getting rid of things. And if you are on kind of the second half of that equation, which I am myself, um, you, you're feeling it right now. So it's very, very normal. It can be very frustrating, very time consuming, um, but it is reality. Um, so if you're on the other end, if you're on the first 40 years, um, you have a chance to make some decisions differently than maybe your parents did or than you've been making up to this point. And um, hopefully this is the start of a new chapter for you. What I want to do tonight is I want to give you the, oh, hang on. I want to give you the encouragement that you can do this. You can do this. And how are you going to do it? Well, very, um, I'm going to give you a system tonight, but I wanted to give you this visual too, because having the right tools is really important to getting to where you want to go very quickly. Uh, when my team and I go out to organize a household. We bring these, what are actually laundry bins with us. Um, they're just big enough that we can put things in, we can cart them around. Um, and there are four bins that we always have with us. So they're here on your screen. You're welcome to take a screenshot of this if it helps you. We have a recycle bin, a trash bin, a donate bin, and an elsewhere bin. We usually line the trash bin with a black bag, which you can see in the front of the picture. And we usually line the donate bin with a, uh, they're actually called bin liners or drum liners, but they're clear or white, whatever you can get your hands on. And having those two different bags is an easy way for us to help somebody very quickly put things in a bag to get out of the house, but the black bags go one place, the white bags or the clear bags go another place. The one that's magical is the elsewhere bin. And that's the one that's gonna keep you organized and on task. So when you're in the middle of an organizing project, um, you know, you've done it yourself. You've said to yourself on some Saturday morning, I'm gonna organize the kitchen today. And an hour later, somehow you're wandering out in the garage or you're wandering, you're looking in front of the, in, inside the linen closet, closet going, how did I get here? Well, you've probably been in the middle of organizing and you found something that belonged in another area of the house. And so you've carried it over there. And in the meantime, you got a phone call or somebody called for a snack or you saw something else laying down and, uh, you know, the cat threw up. So now you got to clean that up on your way back and you just never quite make it back to your, <laughs> your project area. So that elsewhere bin is magical because instead of going to your kitchen and uh, at some point, usually pretty quickly, getting dis, uh, distracted, what you can do is put the things in the elsewhere bin that belong someplace else in the house. And uh, in doing so, you can keep yourself in the um, project area. And uh, you'll see a fifth bin there. 
we always have a fifth bin because there's always something else that has to be done. So oftentimes that'll be our shred bin. If you're working in your home office, somebody said in the chat, they're gonna be doing that this week. If you're working in your home office, you usually have a, a quantity of things that need to be shredded. So that's maybe what we would use it for. If we're working in a closet, maybe we start to put all the purses in there um, just so that we can corral them and, and get them to eventually where they need to go. If you're working in you know, a kid's area, you're gonna have a bunch of toys that you need to uh, start to corral. So we always have that fifth bin as well, but it's those four, the recycle, trash, donate elsewhere, and maybe the shred bin that you wanna start with. All right, my goal here is to inspire you. Actually, that slide I skipped ahead here. I'm gonna, sorry, this is a build. What I wanna do is give you some inspiration, then I'll come back to that slide. Um, he got misplaced at the last minute, sorry about that. So I wanna get, give you some inspiration. I'm gonna do, show you some quick before and afters. This is the before on the left. Hopefully you can see it's the after on the right. And uh, if that's not completely clear to you, I wanna give you some inspiration. These are real photos. They're my clients who've allowed me to share their photos anonymously. And um, I wanna show you some of these. If we have time, I will show you some more at the end, but I wanna get uh, plenty of time out here for you to be inspired by some real fun projects and also to ask questions. Now, by the way, I cannot see the chat and I won't have it open while I'm talking. Um, but Mary, if there's a burning question, you're welcome to um, interrupt me. And uh, we will have time to talk at the end. I'm watching my timer and I'm trying to make sure we have at least uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour to do that. All right. Uh, so this is a basement. If it looks like your basement on the left, Hey, you're not alone. We're lucky in this part of the country that we even have basements, but if you're like me and most of my clients, we've had water in them, they can get pests, and they certainly can just attract all sorts of things from uh, your life. And sometimes you've had people in your that you're close to pass away, so maybe parts of your mom or your dad's life, your in-laws. Uh, maybe even some cousins, um, so so things, and then your your grown children. Well, when they grow up and move away, you know they've got all that stuff from their childhood that probably goes down in the basement. So basements are a, a clutter catch-all for sure. Um, and then closets. So we do a lot of closets, and they are so fun because they're, it's a big bang for the buck. Um, sometimes it's just reorganizing what's there in the systems that are there. So if you have a rod and a hook um, or a rod and a shelf and that works fine for you, great. Maybe what we're doing is going through and deciding which clothes really are the ones that you wanna be living with right now. Um, and decisions are not easy for everybody. So that's totally fine. We can help you make those decisions quickly instead of spending all of your Saturday or all of many Saturdays trying to figure out how to get your closet back. Now, in this case, you can see on the right that we actually brought in an entirely new closet system. And what may not be completely obvious is we doubled the space in that closet immediately by doing that. Now, when I tell you that there are a lot of homes in this area that are million dollars plus, and you put a, a house on the market that's, good, that's being listed for a million and a half, or you live in a million and a half dollar home and you wanna be utilizing it, um, I don't expect to see normally <laughs> the closet on the left, all right? So if I'm in a high-end house, I really like to see, your buyers like to see, and wouldn't you like to be enjoying the high-end closet on the right? So hopefully those are just a couple of uh, inspirational pictures to get us started today. I'm going to jump back to sort and succeed. Actually, let me do it this way. All right. So how are we going to get from any of those befores to any of those afters? That's where you've all, uh, somebody said earlier, it's just really hard to get started. I don't know where to start. Um, I'm emotionally attached or I'm afraid I'm going to be emotionally attached or there's a lot of stuff in that basement. Who's going to carry it all out? All those can be really good questions to start out with. So what I've been doing is working with clients for over 17 years. Mary gave you the little bio there. Um, my company started in uh, New Jersey. We moved to Pennsylvania about 14 years ago and um, I'm based in Wayne work all of the five county areas. And um, what I noticed was that as we are um, 
as we were working with clients, my staff and I, over the last 17 years, we were doing the same thing over and over again, right? We were answering the same questions and we were helping people in the same way, even though everybody's got a slightly different story and a slightly different situation. Um, what we as organizers do is we look for patterns and where there isn't already a pattern, we build one. So that's where Sword and Succeed came from. I wanted to find a way that I could help more than the you know six people a week that I help. I wanted to help lots and lots of people. Um, so I wrote a book and it's called Sword, Organizing Your Home with Sword and Succeed. And this is the system that I talk about. Okay. So uh, what are the five steps of Sword and Succeed? The first one is literally to start. I've had so many people say to me, I'm not motivated to start. Motivation's not part of it. It's not. If you're like me, well, okay, maybe not me. I love my job. I really, really love my job. But for a long time, I worked in corporate and I wasn't always motivated to get up in the morning and go to work, but I did it anyway. Organizing is sometimes kind of like that. But what's different about Sword and Succeed is we ask you to start with a written plan that is five words or less. And that plan should encompass a project that you can do in the time that you have available. So for most people, it can be as little as 15 minutes. It can be up to three hours, but no longer than that. Anybody want to take a guess? I can't see the chat, but I'm going to ask you a question. Anybody want to take a guess why I don't recommend that you take on an organizing project that's going to take you more than three hours? Any guesses? Put it, you got to put it in the chat. Well, actually, you can come off mute too if you want to shout it out. You'll set yourself up for failure. True, but it's more basic than that. Hmm. What happens at three hours? You're done. You're done because you are tired. Nope. Emotionally tired. Nope. Oh, hungry. Hungry. You said it. Exactly. At about three hours, and think about it, if you've been organizing, hands-on organizing, you've been moving, walking from one end of the basement to the other, you are, yeah, maybe tired, but most of us can really keep, you know, walking around our house for three hours. That's not exhausting, but we are hungry. After about three or four hours, you're either going to get to lunch or snack or, you know, somewhere in there, you're going to need food. And at that point, you're probably going to leave the space and you may not come back. Okay, so that's why I recommend getting a project in, in place. The project that you're gonna be working on is either going to be um, on the low end. So as little as 15 minutes, that could be your junk drawer or the kitchen counter or the bathroom counter or just picking up uh, hangers out of the laundry room. That's a 15 minute project, all of those. And if you need any ideas, there's ton of, tons of them on my blog or you can put some um, 15 minute projects that you like to do in the chat and help everybody else out here. Um, so that is the start. Start with a written plan, five words or less that takes you between 15 minutes and three hours. So organize my whole house is not a good organizing goal. Okay. Clean out the garage when you've got two bays and boxes up to here. That's not a single organizing project. You need to break it down into smaller chunks. And you've heard that before, but that's what smaller chunks look like, okay? Second step is to organize by category. You have been doing this since you were toddlers. Toddlers, let, and some of you have kids, have toddlers. Some of you have grandchildren. You see the toddlers love to sort. They do. Kids naturally love to sort. They'll put the Legos with the Legos. They'll put the blue Legos with the blue Legos. Sometimes, not when you want to do it usually, but toddlers, and I'm not saying kids, I'm saying toddlers love to sort. So we know how to do it. We all love to do it. This is step two of sort and succeed. Just get like with like, get things that are similar in the same space. And why do I do that? Because step three, which is the one that you were afraid of and the one that you're dreading is to release, reduce, and reset. The first part of that, the release and reduce, you cannot possibly decide what you're getting rid of until it's all together. Mm -hmm. So if I, if you have 30 black t-shirts and I hold up one black t-shirt and say to you, do you want it? Do you want to donate it? Do you want to toss it? You cannot possibly, most of us cannot possibly make that decision quickly 
and with confidence, unless you see all the other 29 next to that one black t-shirt. Okay. So if you get everything in a group together, it's a lot easier for you to go down and you know, you've done this before. Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. But if you take one item out of context and I ask you what's going to happen with this, your gut reaction is always to say, well, it's mine. I'm keeping it. That's brain science. Okay. There's a, a Nobel prize winning economist, economist named uh, Richard Thaler that I follow. And he won the Nobel prize uh, within the last five years, something like that for something, his work on something called the endowment theory. And he's actually, uh, he's made friends with some psychologists. So it's, he's, they actually created a whole new field called behavioral economics. And uh, in short, it's why we do the crazy things we do. And um, they discovered or codified or described this thing called the endowment theory. And I love to talk about it because it explains why we have that gut reaction of it's mine, I'm keeping it. Okay. And the endowment theory says, once something comes into your possession, what the behavioral economists, you know, they have to create scientific names for everything. So what they call um, uh, yours, right? Your stuff becomes the endowment. And uh, once it's in your endowment, you are more likely to keep it and to feel pain, physical pain, mental pain, and also, hey, your brain is a physical organ. So you feel mental pain, that is physical pain. And you feel pain when things, when you lose things. Um, and that's called loss aversion. So we, uh, well, it's called losing things, but the psychologists will say the, the scientific term for being afraid of or feeling that pain when we lose things, it, it's actually called loss aversion. So people who say to me, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't get rid of that old black t-shirt that I'm not going to wear anymore, but it's still, I don't want to get rid of it. Why is that? It's a whole bunch of things and I'm oversimplifying for the sake of time, but the endowment theory and loss aversion and a whole other uh, set of psychological tools that we've come to understand since we've had the, the MRI, you know, this magical tool that allows us to see inside the brain a little bit more than we could have 20 or 30 years ago. So that release, reduce, and then put things back where they go. That's the resetting or put things back or put things in a spot where they're really going to work for you. Um, that's that middle step of making the change, right? But we don't, we don't jump into organizing by saying, what are you going to get rid of? We jump into organizing by knowing what we're going to do and then finding out what we have. Step three is where you release, reduce, and then you can put things back together again. Step four is tweak, which is making small changes. Once you're sort of, you know, once you're mostly organized, you're always going to be making changes throughout the rest of your life. You're never done organizing saying I'm done organizing or I want to be done organizing or why am I you know, organizing again? I just did it last week. That's as futile as saying, why am I brushing my teeth again today? You would never say, well, I'm, I don't have to brush my teeth. I, I went to the dentist last month. I see him every six months, right? That just sounds silly. We know that we've built brushing our teeth into our routine. So it takes two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening, and no adult that I know cries about it. Okay, so that's a tweak that we want to, once you get to uh, organizing maintenance, you're going to be making tweaks every day of your organizing life for the rest of your life. And I hope it's a long one. So that's step four. And step five, again, I bring in the brain science. We need to reward ourselves for doing what we set out to do. Now you do this very naturally, again, with young children, you praise them for the smallest thing. Yay. Thanks for getting to the bus stop on time, or thanks for helping to set the table or yay. You learned to tie your shoes. You will keep praises on your grandchildren all day long, but we don't do it with ourselves. Somewhere along the line, we decided to stop celebrating our own achievements. And so that's why I love the, the self-care bingo. That's, um, one way, you know, to encourage us to look for those little ways to uh, reward ourselves for doing a good job. And not only is this a good idea, like, oh, that's, you know, that would be fun, treat myself better, right? No, actually what we're doing is we're training our brain. Now, people who say to me, oh, I can't organize, you know, I was never good at organizing. Well, it's because you haven't 
found the secret sauce, you haven't reinforced over and over again, the system that's going to work for you. Um, I have people all the time tell me they're not good at something. Oh, I'm not good at technology. And they'll be the first one to text me. 10 years ago, nobody texted anybody. It wasn't a thing. We didn't all walk around with, you know, NASA quality computers in our back pocket. And you know what? You had to teach yourself how to text. You had to teach yourself in the last two years how to get on a Zoom call. And there's 78 of you on a Zoom call that had to learn something, probably for most of you, completely new in the last two years. And you didn't all do it on day one. <laughs> I guarantee you, it was over time. So what we're doing with Succeed and Celebrate is saying, pick a reward for your organizing progress, not for perfection, but when you pick a reward and you follow through on it, you are actually training your brain. Uh, we don't have time to go into it and there's much more in my book on this, but you're actually making the neurons, which are the um, pathways in your brain, you're making the neurons uh, connect together and stay together. So there's a, there's a saying in the field, neurons that fire together, wire together. And that's when you fire a neuron constantly or repeatedly, it, it actually grows to the two neurons grow towards each other and they eventually link together. And that's when you've created a pathway in your brain of a thought, we call it a habit. Okay. The brushing your teeth twice a day is a habit for most of us. And that's because we've taught our brains to repeatedly brush our teeth twice a day. Okay. So that's how that works. There is brain science in what I teach people, but also it's very straightforward. It's five steps. Anybody can do five steps. And once you learn this and how to do it in one space, you can do it in the rest of your home. It can even apply to organizing your time, organizing your money, organizing your um, computer files and your physical files, your uh, paperwork, information of all kinds. So, and even your photos, somebody brought up photos uh, earlier. We're not going to be talking about that at all tonight. Okay. So that's sort and succeed much more about that on my website, which you are welcome to go to. And if you would like a quick little um, printable, if, if this sounds like, like the secret sauce for you and you want something to pin on your refrigerator, then um, you are welcome to go to the website that I've got on the bottom of this page. It's sort.heartworkorg.com. And there's a free download for a couple of things. Uh, you, it will put you on my website. I'm not trying to be covert about that. Okay. It will put you on my mailing list and you'll get all the uh, weekly articles that come out um, from my website, but there's also free downloads. One of them is the sort and succeed visual. So you can print that off at home and the other one, and you can have the steps to remind yourself how to do that. The other thing that you'll get in this download is a, um, it's a tracker for when you declutter and you drop off donations and maybe they're tax deductible, maybe not. Um, we've had some tax changes in the last few years that have changed that a little bit. But when you download um, those free printables, um, you'll get a do uh, donation tracker. All right. So a um, little Carla, more about me. Yes. Just a, there was a quick question about the... Um, the behavioral economists and they're just their name. Yeah. Okay. So his name is Richard Thaler, T-H-A-L-E-R. Mm -hmm. He's a, an economist at the University of Chicago. Great, great guy. I hope to meet him one day. He hasn't answered my fan mail yet. <laughs> I actually know somebody who works with him, uh, but I haven't met him yet. So anyway, okay. So stop decluttering. So I didn't lead with this, but I want you to like do a double take right now. Okay. Hopefully you, you know me now enough to trust me and know what I'm talking about. And I actually want you to do something crazy. I know you came here to declutter, but I want you to stop decluttering. And the reason is that this, this cycle of buy, toss, buy, toss, you know, and actually it's, it's buy, put in the corner, you know, um, get frustrated with toss, buy more, you know, put somewhere in storage in your house, 
declutter, get frustrated with. And that whole cycle over and over again is not working for us. It is not working for us as Americans. It's not working for us as world citizens. This is not an American problem, by the way. It's a worldwide problem. I uh, went to Australia and spoke with my colleagues there. And I went to New Zealand and spoke with my colleagues there. We have professional organizers in every uh, you know, first world country in the world right now. Um, and we all know this is a problem. And um, so think about organizing when you're at the store. If you need to stop yourself and take some things out of your shopping cart because you know that they're gonna be clutter in the long run, that's the best, that's the best move. Okay, so people ask, um, just checking the time here. Uh, so I have a bunch of questions that I know that you have, right? It's perfectly good. It's just scratched or it's broken a little. Somebody could fix it. It's, I mean, I have another one already, but it's somebody else could use it, right? Should I, should I keep it? Should I have it second? I mean, uh, you know, my iron broke last week. This is a true story. I broke my iron. Um, I know people who have three, four, five irons and never iron anything, but they've got the second and the third and the fifth one, just in case the first one breaks. Okay. Not a great strategy. That's going to contribute to clutter. Um, can I give my clutter? Can I give my stuff to friends and family members? Maybe, but don't make them take it. That's not nice. <laughs> What should I do with maps or books? You know, well, it's a map of, of Germany when it was still split in two pieces. Yes, but you're not the archivist. There are archivists, there are real librarians on the call tonight. And even they are not the archivists of the 50 year old German map. Okay. Um, you always want to ask yourself, remember, this is the endowment um, process, the endowment theory kicking it. Oh, but it's mine. I own it now. Shouldn't I keep it? Is it getting you to the life you want to live? All right. Um, what should we put here after we organize? Well, look, if you're selling your house next year, probably nothing. Okay. If you're looking for a simpler life, probably nothing. You can learn, but you have to train your brain. You can learn to live with nothing on a shelf. And I don't mean in a deprivation way. I mean, just like, oh, there's less to dust, right? Um, is this the worst you've ever seen? People ask me that all the time. Oh, must be the worst you've ever seen. I'm so embarrassed to have you in here. Look, I solve puzzles. That's all. That's what an organizer does. I just solve puzzles. You're stressed about something and I want to make the stress go away. So no, I can tell you, I've seen some, some pretty um, interesting situations, but I can guarantee the 79 people on the call. No, yours is not the worst I've ever seen. Guaranteed. Uh, what about my pictures? We're not going to have time to talk about pictures, but those are kind of a special category. But here's the thing. If you are saving your pictures, make sure they're in a safe place, right? Your waterlogged basement is not where your picture should be. Your attic that goes hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold all year long, that's not where your photo should be. Your garage with mice in it, please get them out of there. Uh, the, the pictures, not the mice. I mean, the mice too, but um, see, these are questions that I know that you have, and I'd love to chat with you, you know, about them, but I want you to know that you're not the only one that has these questions. So how are we going to fight the brain? You know, how are we going to do this? Well, clutter is a real thing. And a lot of it happens up here. Um, we know a lot of times, you know, people say, I know that's the 18th coffee maker we found. I know it's not rational to have 18 coffee makers. I know I don't, I don't need five irons when I don't even, I can't even tell you the last time I ironed. You know it's rational, but it's still, there's an emotional thing there. The, the th crazy thing is everybody thinks they're broken because they have this emotional attachment to things. It's actually, if you don't have that emotional attachment, there's something wrong with your brain, right? So if you have an emotional attachment to things, even if they don't quite seem completely rational to you, that actually signals that your brain is working exactly like it should, okay? The cavemen, um, the, 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 our caveman ancestors were wired, they evolved to hoard the nuts because winter was coming, right? Winter's coming, winter's coming, I have to save all the nuts. Well. Unfortunately, our brains have not evolved as fast as the retail chains have. 
So my brain is still saying, got to hoard the nuts, got to hoard the nuts, even though I can drive five miles to Target and get nuts anytime I want. Okay. So the disconnect between our reality and how we've evolved, it's, it's real. And it, once you know about it, you can then take some real steps to, um, to deal with this. Um, Richard Thaler, actually this line, you're, you're not lazy. Life is hard. Um, he actually said that. And I just laughed when I heard him say it, he's right. He's right. There's a lot of things in life. We have to make decisions on the last thing. Some of you want to do is come home after a hard day's work or dealing with the kids or, you know, whatever you got to do. The last thing a lot of you want to do is to come home and have to make a whole nother set of decisions about what stays and what goes and how you're going to display it. <laughs> okay. Um, and if you're so far down the road with organizing or clutter, or, you know, I've lived in my house. I talk to people all the time. I've lived in my house 42 years. Um, there's something called the, what the heck effect. I did not make this up and it's actually not what the heck you can, you can figure out what it is actually. Um, but it's the, it's the same that we have with dieting. So, uh, you may have, run into this before where I'm dieting. I'm not supposed to be eating the bad things. Oh, I had one donut accidentally. I may as well have five. That's the, what the heck? What I had one donut. What the heck? My diet's broken. I may as well have five. Um, we kind of do that with clutter too. Oh, the, you know, the, the basement's a mess. I mean, the garage is a mess. I, how would I work on the basement when the garage is such a mess? You know, what the heck it's, uh, who wants pie? We could do anything else today. Don't talk to me about organizing. Right. Um, so the, what the heck effect does show up when we're dealing with clutter as well. But what we know is that clutter causes stress. There's another, um, really interesting study. Uh, there's two actually one out of Cornell, um, that showed that women specifically who have clutter on their countertops and, um, starchy snacks and they store them on their countertops as opposed to putting them inside a pantry. Um, those folks will typically be, uh, there's a, there's a percentage of those folks that will have a, uh, they'll be in the more obese range. Okay. As opposed to women who do not store things in including starchy snacks on their countertops, they will typically be in the normal weight range. Very interesting. Is one causal? I'm not sure. Um, there's another interesting study that was from, uh, I think it was 2010. I'm going to forget the university. I wanted to tell you guys this, but uh, get to me if you're really, if you need this study, uh, you know, if you need to read it, because it's a really interesting one. Women who work at home uh, or sorry, women who are at home in a, what they consider, whatever they consider to be a stressful, cluttered work environment, their cortisol levels, um, which cortisol is a hormone that we have in our, in our bloodstream when measured, their cortisol levels are up and they stay up as opposed to their partners, their male partners in the same household who might say, yes, my house feels a little cluttered their cortisol levels, the men's will go up and they'll come right back down. Um, meaning that women internalize clutter as stress guys, again, broad brush, but this is backed up by a study. Um, guys will say, yeah, there's clutter here. I see it. It's not stressing me out as much. So really super interesting. We know for a fact that clutter causes stress. So if that's you, guess what? Your brain is working just fine. You are totally normal. You may not like it. So what are we going to do about it? Well, if you are one of those people that says, I'm so overwhelmed, how can I get out of this? Here's what you do. You build a routine, just like brushing your teeth twice a day. You build a routine to do 15 minutes of organizing. It could be the same spot every single day. That doesn't mean that you failed. It means that you're doing maintenance on a regular basis. So if you're always organizing and cleaning up the um, kitchen counter, because that's the most important space to you, that's a great routine. That is a really great routine to have. Start with today's mail, try and eliminate distractions when you're working on organizing. That's why we start with a written goal because it helps you, it helps bring you back when you do get distracted. Again, people say to me all the time, I must have ADHD. I get distracted all the time. That doesn't prove that you have ADHD. It's what, what happens next. 
everybody gets distracted, but it's what happens next that matters. Um, deal with overdue bills before they become overdue, because once you uh, start ignoring your mail, then you get the second notice and the third notice. So what was a little pile of mail becomes a big pile of mail and it's more overwhelming. And the more overwhelmed you get, the less likely you are to say, okay, today's the day I start organizing. Um, the, uh, you know, read thing you got it. A lot of times people will say, oh, there's mail. It's clutter. It's overwhelming. <clears throat> I'm going to ignore it. But if you simply read it and I say simply, nothing is simple, right? What, what did Thaler say? You're not crazy. Life is hard. You're not lazy. <laughs> Life is hard. Um, but you can read the paperwork. It'll take you 30 seconds. And then that paperwork is out of your life. Even if it takes you five minutes, then that paper is out of your life. And if you are overwhelmed and you can't get started, even after this, th this evening, get help, find a trusted friend who says, I'm willing to work with you without judgment or hire a professional organizer. This is not a hobby for me. This is my full-time job. And I have employees <laughs> This is their, their job. They come in and get paid to help people solve puzzles. All right. So how are we going to make lasting changes? want to look. Yep. Okay. So lasting changes, systematize anything. Systematizing just means putting a process around what you're doing. Positive focus. Losses hurt. That's loss aversion. Gains feel good. Keep in mind both ends of the spectrum. Cause if you only focus on the losses hurt, you'll never get rid of anything. What's good in your life. Okay. So yeah, I'm not crazy about having to get rid of things out of my basement, but I want my grandchild to have a place to play on a rainy day. That's the good end of getting organized, right? Yeah, it's going to take some time to organize the Christmas ornaments and Christmas decorations. But once I do that, um, getting everything out next year to decorate is only going to take an hour instead of a whole day. Yay, that's the good. So figure out what you're trying to accomplish instead of what you're having to deprive yourself of. Small bites, 15 minutes, motivation doesn't matter. You don't have to be motivated to actually do the work. It's okay. <laughs> Get help. Um, are women natural organizers? I could do a whole nother session on this. <laughs> um, just because you have a, a uterus does not mean that you are a natural born organizer. Um, tweaking, making small changes. As you get more and more organized, you'll continue to make small changes. Um, a lot of us, I think the social media has done us a disservice because it looks like, you know, we go from a mess to, and then we went and bought some stuff and it solved all our problems. Clutter, um, organizing gadgets do not solve your organizing problems. Putting things in bins does not make you organized. Okay, I'm going to say that one again, because it is so true. And you'll know it when you go to buy your next plastic bin, which I hope to God you won't do. Putting things in bins does not make you organized. All it does is put things in bins. <laughs> All right? um, claim your reward. Once you get through an or uh, once you get make progress, once you make progress on an organizing project, treat yourself to a reward and you're going to train your brain. All right, what's stopping you? This is the um, audience interaction part of the, in the evening. I'd love for you, again, I can't see the chat right now. I have it closed down, but I'd love for you to put in the chat that one thing that you're thinking, I can't start organizing because there's something in my brain that I just can't get past. For some people, it's the wedding dress. There's a, I've had this question asked of me more times than I can tell you, what about that wedding dress in the attic? And that's not the problem. <laughs> that's a thing that sits somewhere right now, but that's not the reason that your garage is disorganized. Okay. Um, we have a little bit of background noise. I don't know if we can get that muted. Um, greeting cards. I was, uh, somebody in my Facebook group just last week said, I gave away two whole shopping bags of greeting cards. And I said, oh, great. So now with what you have left, do you have just enough, too much or not enough? And she said, oh Lord, I don't even know why I had any of those anyway. I haven't given any great greeting cards away in at least 15 years. 
And uh, so that was, that was interesting, right? She gave only half of her stash away, <laughs> but she said she's not using them. So there's some emotional, you know, at some point in her life, greeting cards were an important thing. She doesn't use them anymore, but she thinks of herself as a person who either did at one time or should in the future. It's something she's working through and I'm really proud of her for doing it. But once she gets rid of the other two bags of greeting cards that she has no intention of using, you know, she's going to have all that space in her home office, which is she actually needs for work. Um, grandma's China, you know, what do you do with it? Grandma's broken China. <laughs> what do you do with that? Uh, dad's old scale. Literally, I have a client who um, showed me this thing. It was really cool. It was like a a pharmacist scale from the last century, like the last, last century. And um, she knew it wasn't valuable. She said, it's probably, you know, probably not really valuable at all. I'm just, I don't know why I have it. I'm just not ready to get rid of it. So we put it on display, you know, in her home. And that was uh, the way for her to at least start to clear out the basement, right? You have a bunch of stuff like that, that you're hanging on to. Maybe it's cool enough to show off in your house. So maybe you can put one thing in the chat that you're like afraid to have to tackle. <laughs> that thing is probably stopping you from organizing everything else. All right. So here's another thing. Got to remember, write it down, take a screenshot. Keeping it longer doesn't make it cheaper. If it's something that you're meant to get rid of, if it's something that by getting rid of it, by passing it on, by donating it so somebody else can have the benefit of using it, if it gives you the space and the uh, serenity that you're looking for, hanging on to it one more day is not going to make it any cheaper. I don't know if anybody can relate to that. If you can, you can put that in the chat. All right. So this is the year that you get organized. Okay, I am running a little bit long, but we will take a couple of questions here in a second. Um, this is the year you get organized. Every year in my free Facebook group, this is not an advertisement, but you're welcome to join. There is a um, URL up on the screen. And every year we go through one space per month. You are welcome to work on anything that you want and give us updates on anything that you want. But um, every month I pick a project and I ask you to focus in. January was kitchens and pantries. It's the last day of the month. So tomorrow we'll start on storage and closets. And you pick a closet in your home and you commit to getting it organized. And if you get the first one done, then you can go and do a second and third if you feel motivated, if you feel like you want to do that. Um, but by following along on the schedule, People who've been with me in this free Facebook group for a couple of years, every year they get their entire house organized one room at a time. If you haven't been making as much progress as you want to, please come and hang out with us. Okay. No cost to that. There's no, there's no advertising or anything. I just want to have, I want to make sure that you have the resources that you need. All right. I've got a couple of pictures uh, before and after. You know, these are, again, real homes and the kinds of changes that they made. This one is actually uh, declutter, somebody who was selling their house. So the just real quick story, you know, they always say to me, but, but what about the entertainment set, center? And I said, well, are you taking it to your new home? Well, no, it's, it's not going to go in the new house. It's not our style anymore. And I said, well, now is the time to donate it. Because look, look at all the space that you get back or sell it if you can, you know, manage that. Um, but look at all the space that you get back in the after. And uh, nine times out of 10, my staging clients will say, oh, I wish I'd done this earlier because now I'm turning over this beautiful house that I could have been living in and I'm turning it over to somebody else. What about your kitchen drawers? What about all those little hidey spaces in your house? Um, this one makes me laugh. My the client and I just laugh about this one all the time. The left was the knife drawer, knife drawer before. Yeah, I don't want to go anywhere near that. I mean, he's a surgeon, and we laugh about like he could have lost a hand in this drawer before we organized it. And just you know, paring down. He actually did get rid of about half of his knives and. Um, got one organizing tool, which is this knife caddy here. And uh, now it all makes sense, right? Now we've got space in that drawer and, and it's much safer. On the left, we've got a regular old closet, not even a closet a rod in a shelf. We're not even, uh, we're missing a shelf here. 
Um, and they've done some things to try and make it more organized. You know, maybe I'll put an armoire or dresser in there. Wasn't quite working. Um, sometimes you do actually need a whole new closet system. And by doing that, you saw it earlier, usually by putting in the right closet system, we can actually double the usable space in your old closet, no construction needed. So um, simple change, you just got to make the commitment to do it. And the little inset in the middle, um, I always like to put a little something special in the closets. You know, I do like them to look pretty. So if there's a little, you know, special pair of shoes or um, jewelry or, or, or uh, in this case, it's perfume, like really high end perfume, you know, we show it off. So um, this actually belongs to the when I told you that was staging. This is a quote from my client. She said, when when you're downsizing, you're going to be tempted to try and sell your old stuff. But it takes a lot of effort to do that. Focus in on she said, focus in your best value is going to come from selling your house at the highest possible price. So you might get $10 for this piece of furniture, or, you know, $10 for that item, but you can get tens of thousands of dollars selling your house properly staged. And you don't organize and stage at the same time. They are two different things, but they are um, on a continuum for a lot of people. Maximize your home, not your stuff. All right. So this is me. It's uh, got a few minutes. Um, I do want to put this up because, again, lower left-hand corner, there's a URL, sort.heartworkorg.com. You are welcome to go there and uh, get the free downloads that I mentioned earlier. You're also welcome to email me if we run out of time. You can email me with a question um, maybe you don't want to ask in a big forum. I'm a real person. I live in Wayne. And you're welcome to call me or email me and um, bend my ear about your organizing problems. I, like I said, I love solving them. I do have a couple more before and afters, but I think we're going to run out of time. And I'm not sure if we have a hard stop here at eight. Um, I will stay on and answer questions, but we may want to stop the recording. So Mary, I'll leave that up to you. But I am opening it up for any questions at this point. Mary, do you want to help me out? Let me know. If yeah, um, I was looking at the chat um, and there was some really interesting um, uh, comments. Uh, people were uh, responding to your what's keeping you from starting. Um, and, and there was some interesting um, uh, one said, I, I, I came uh, I came to get get rid of my grandma's. I, I can't get rid of my grandma's fancy hats and china dolls. So much guilt for not wanting or using. Um, so, yeah. So yeah. all of that in there, right? We are not about guilt. Like uh, guilt. So I was on a podcast recently, and actually, um, this got pulled off. The the podcaster pulled it off as a quote: "Guilt never got anything organized." Guilt never made anything better, all right? If you have a treasured family heirloom, whether it's valuable or not, right? Whether it's, so value is a weird thing. You can value, it usually refers to like monetary value and you can only get what you paid for it. But if you have an emotional attachment to something, whether it's worth a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars, right? If you have an emotional attachment to it, then it's valuable to you, but if it's decaying in your basement, attic, or garage, or if you have not seen it, it's been in the back of some closet for decades, is it really all that valuable to you? Or do you just have that endowment theory with it? Okay. So yes, you can be emotionally attached to it, but that is not the same as saying it's valuable to me. The things that are valuable to you, you are using every day. And if you're, you know, if you want to challenge me on that and say, no, 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 it's, it's really valuable. That's why I don't use it. There's something called the, um, this is again from psychology, uh, it's called the specialness spiral. You can look this up. Um, and that is when we say it's too good to use which is just bonkers, really. Now, maybe a hundred years ago, we had Sunday clothes and like, maybe it was a thing, but it's not anymore. And I am a, the people in my group hear me say this all the time, wear your diamonds every day kind of gal, okay? There is no point in keeping your diamonds 
and never wearing them, never enjoying them. It's the same as having that beautiful, you know, this I'll flip back here. Um, it's the same as having a gorgeous house. So I'm showing it up on the screen here. A uh, gorgeous house that you don't actually live in. You're living with the, you know, 1980s furniture and uh, halfway broken down um, uh, sofas. And there's no color scheme going on in the house. And, you know, you fix it up and realize what a gem you've had the whole time. Right. So we are all about taking the things that are special to you and putting them on display. So if there's a doll collection, maybe you don't want a whole collection. We're actually discussing this right now in the Facebook group. Somebody's got a whole collection. Maybe you don't want the whole collection, but maybe there are one or two or three dolls in there that you could display. And that reminds you of your grandma every single day. And, um, you know, and, and you're, you're honoring in that case, you're honoring the emotion and the relationship that you had with that person. Does that help? Um, there was another uh, comment. My mind is not organized. So how can I possibly organize anything? Oh, that is great. So um, I'll answer that just briefly two, two ways. Um, one is if you do uh, have undiagnosed ADHD and you really feel like that is getting in the way of you living your best life, I do encourage you to, to seek out treatment because there are medical um, interventions that can help you center yourself and that can, and medical and non-medical interventions. Um, there's an interesting uh, study that says that five minutes of meditation a day is as effective and this is a clinical study, five minutes of meditation a day is as effective as um, prescriptions for most people. Um, that, yeah, right? That's powerful. How many of us are doing five minutes of meditation? We think we have to do, you know, I mean, again, there's a lot of expectations around what we should be doing. Just give it a try, right? There's nothing to lose. It's hard to meditate in the way that a lot of us want to, I'll tell you, I cannot sit still and meditate, but I can do yoga for a half an hour. And that is also can be, can be, um, a form of meditation that works better for me. So that's the ADHD side, right? So there may be something going on there. I will tell you on the other hand, um, I, in my world, <laughs> people are constantly saying now that my space is organized, I've, I'm able to like bring my thoughts to where they need to be. I can do what I need to do, be, but I couldn't have done it when my, when my environment was so cluttered. And we know that we're living in a social experience right now or social experiment um, right now when everybody went home to work, you know, not everybody had a home office. Not everybody had a space that was conducive to doing work at home. So we've, we've had this great social experiment going on now for the last two years of how much work can you get done when you're, you know, in a, an environment that's not optimal. You've got pet. I don't know if you can hear my Siamese cat right now. She's just outside my door and she wants in. Okay. So three times a day, she wakes up and she's like, I want you all to pay attention to me. And she will go on like this for 15 minutes. So if you can't hear her, I'm, I'm grateful for that, but that is not optimal. <laughs> to getting work done. Oh, and then add my two teenage children on top of that, <laughs> you know? Um, so, so your environment, where things are, how things are operating, you know, whether even the light is good, um, all of those things can factor into whether you can, you can actually have the thought processes that you need to have to get to where you want to go, but you can try both, right? You can try and get your, your environment in place and working for you and then see if that changes your mental processes or you can focus in on your mental processes and say okay I'm going to work on that and then also go work on the environment but we're social creatures we need both. Carla there's a couple of questions in the chat about um, pl good places to donate furniture household item and household items. Good I'll make this one really short. Um, well, two things the, the, I think we might have a national audience here because I put the word out to everybody. So if you're not local to me in Philadelphia, just 
uh, grain of salt here. You're going to have the same resources in your area, most likely. But if you want to go to my website, which has been put up in the chat a couple of times already, um, under organizing, there is a link for donation and recycling directory. And I was just on it the other day. I want to say there's like oh, 115 resources on there. And it's everything from like, where can I donate, um, you know, regular old stuff, uh, household stuff to um, specialty items like bikes. And what did I put on there the other day? I just added one. Um, even uh, mascara wands, you know, when, you, when you're done with your mascara, uh, you can actually take out the wand, clean it off with a little bit of soap, and you can mail it off to this place called uh, Wands for Wildlife, I think it is. And uh, they use it to clean, um, to clean off wildlife after oil spills and, and when they've been contaminated. So just crazy, like um, chapstick tubes, you know, if you're really into doing your part, um, I have a resource for that. Oh, it was trophies. Like, I was trophies. Um, sorry, that might've gotten drowned out there. Uh, I added a resource for trophies and uh, the resource actually happens to be in Westchester. And so if your kid is, you know, 40 years old and you still got their baseball trophies <laughs> in your house, they don't want them. Your children do not want those. They're taking up space in your um, house and we've had to just throw them in the dumpster up until now, but, um, there is this, this resource that I added and, uh, it's right here in Westchester, but you can ship them no matter where you live in the country, they will take a shipment. Um, if you're willing to pay, they're willing to take them and reuse them. They sometimes melt them down. They sometimes, uh, they use a lot of them to keep their costs down when they're supporting, um, you know, places like the special Olympics and, and places that they donate their services to. So, there you go. Um, just a couple of other uh, comments here. Um, uh, one said, I'm, I'm notice, I've noticed some of my clutter is unfinished things. Other clutter is items I've left out where I can see them as reminders to take action. In both situations, I had a mental plan to deal with them, uh, but I realized my plan wasn't clear enough. My intention needs to be clear and the time to do these things need to be my plan in my planner. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of what we do with, uh, with the people that we work with is they'll say, Oh, I'll just put it here for now. And like, if you hear yourself say that I should have put it on a slide, I'll just put it here for now. <laughs> <laughs> that is death to your plan. Okay. <laughs> that means you don't have a plan. Um, so if you do have a project in progress, and I don't mean like a knitting project or something that you do for fun, but, um, so I, we were organizing the other day and the doctor that I was working with, we came across a bag of sharps, uh, needles, right? So you can't just throw those in the trash. I said, you have to dispose of those properly. And he knows how to do it. Um, he said, okay, I'll just put them here for now. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> They're going by the front door. We have a little table up by the front door. And I said, pull out your, your phone, pull out your phone, fire up your calendar and make a date with yourself to drop these off at the pharmacist. And I make people do this. Every time I hear them say, oh yeah, I'll do that. I'll, just, I'll drop it off the dry cleaner. I've got to get those shoes fixed. I'll take them to the, okay. Which cobbler are you taking them to? I don't know. There's some guy at the mall. I'm not really sure. No, 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 no. We're going to figure this out, right? So I actually like do, you know, put the thumb screws on and say, where, how, where, when, right? The when is put it on your, on your um, calendar and uh, commit to yourself that you're actually going to follow up on those things, just like you would at work, right? You wouldn't say, oh, I'll get to that, you know, accounting report. I don't know, sometime. <laughs> Like it's due on the first day of the month, right? So um, yeah, so use that, that trick of making appointments with yourself. Uh, a, a couple of uh, chats are about taking pictures of items um, that they're struggling to get rid of. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. We hear that a lot and uh, it absolutely can be something um, that you can do if it, you know, if it works for you, great. It's not appropriate for everything. I actually am a big fan of like getting it back in your life as opposed to taking a picture of it and still struggling with it. Cause I've seen people say, oh yeah, I'll just take a picture of it. And then they like put it back in the closet. <laughs> you know? So I have the picture, I have the digital clutter and the real clutter. Um, the one thing that I do love taking the picture of and then tossing is kids artwork. 
So there's a whole, you know, I actually have an online class on how to do that. So you can print a book for your kids or grandkids. Um, and that's really fun because then you end up with a book and you don't end up with the totes, the rubber band totes that are under somebody's bed or in the basement. Um, but if there, there are so many ways to honor the things in your life that you thought you needed to take a picture of. So if there's like a step stool, you know, that I have one that came from my aunt or my great aunt and, um, you know, I use it. It's really pretty. It's somebody hand embroidered it. She didn't do it. She like thought it was pretty and bought it for us. I don't, you know, store that I use it. Right. Um, the, I cannot tell you how many times a year somebody tries to give me their silver because <laughs> kids don't want it. Adult children do not want to polish silver. Um, and, uh, you know, but if you love it, I have a, a one client who loves to polish silver and she uses it. She has brunch at her place a lot. She has a lot of friends and she uses it like every week. That is the best case scenario. Um, you know, handkerchiefs, like, um, a shawl maybe that somebody made you or, um, my, I have a, my grandmother used to crochet and she made doilies all the time. And I have just one that is framed and hung in my bedroom. It doesn't go with anything, but I love it. It's not on the floor. It's not in a drawer. It's hung and it's displayed. And it's, she had a little name tag with it too. Uh, she had name tags made for all these. So, you know, it's not, a high-end framing or anything, but it's mine. It's my memory. It will not mean anything to my kids at all. They never knew her, um, but I want it on display and I want those things on display for you. So a lot of times what we will do is we will hang pictures and we'll hang things. Well, um, I've got a client now, she's got uh, three or four antique jello molds. They're about this big. They're not big. Um, like the copper jello molds, you know what I'm talking about? Who has a copper jello mold at home? Shout out in the, uh, the, the chat. <laughs> um, so we found them and I said, what are we doing with them? And her reaction is always, oh, I'm keeping them. Okay, fine. But that wasn't the question. The question is, what are we doing with them? So I said, how about we hang them? She loved that idea. Now she's finding more copper jello molds in the rest of her house that she forgot she had. And we've got a little copper jello mold gallery going and it's really cute. So there you go. Somebody said, I, I started using my grandparents' Waterford crystal during COVID. Yes, I love hearing that. <laughs> so realized I was wasting away in the attic. Don't mind hand washing it. There you go. You wear your diamonds every day, girlfriend. Yep. Did we get through all the questions? I feel like I'm at the end, unless anybody's got something burning um, that they need to ask. I, I think we got through them. I hope, hopefully I got to them all. Did I inspire anybody to do something differently from an organizing standpoint? Good. Helen's inspired. Good. Julie. Julie's so glad you can make it. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing, right? Is I'm a professional and I'm, I do this all day long. I love, love, love solving puzzles, right. And helping people. Nothing makes me happier than, than, um, you know, this picture that we still have up on the screen. I have like three more. Do you want to see the before and afters? Do we have time? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, so this one is, I know somebody on here probably has a storage unit. <laughs> <laughs> this wasn't one storage unit. This was four storage units. And if you pay for a storage unit every month, you know, we did the math and I, I won't go into detail, but this gal had paid over $9,000 on storage on these four units over the years. So uh, we got her out of one storage unit on this day, we got her out of another storage unit the next day. Um, it took her a, a month or two to finally get out of the third one and she's down to one storage unit. She hopes to move uh, next month. So, you know, great story that like that $9,000 could have been working a lot harder for her than storing this stuff. And sadly about 80% of the stuff did go right in the dumpster. It was not valuable to her when she took a look at it, you know, 10 years later. Uh, this is another before and after. Um, yep. It is the same room. I promise you almost all the same. Well, actually it is the same furniture. We just took the uh, headboard out because the brass and the brass headboards are no bueno these days for staging. Um, we, I did make her, <laughs> it's a longer story, but I did make her 
get new carpet in this one room it was the only room that needed carpet. And she said, I'm not doing it. I said, you need to do it. <laughs> they sold the house the week it went on the market for lots more than they expected, like $50,000 more. Um, uh, this is the same house actually. And before is on the left, uh, not a lot of changes, you know, same carpet. Um, but, and this actually is not even the before before on, on the left. It's uh, kind of like the cleaned up before. <laughs> um, but I said to her, yeah, way too much furniture and nobody walking in the house is going to want those wing chairs. <laughs> so like your 30 year old buyer for this house is not looking for 50 year old wing chairs. Uh, trust me on that. So, um, you know, so sometimes it's organizing and sometimes it's organizing because you're moving on to the next phase of your life. And you just ask yourself, like, if I, I mean, I've used all of these things, I've gotten all the use out of it with sometimes we'll say, you know, it doesn't owe you anything, right? If you enjoyed it, if you used it, um, you know, you don't have to take it to your next house. And if you're not going to take it to your next house, it's, you know, you need to find a new home for it now because your biggest asset is actually the house. And that's what you want to show off. Right. So, all right. So um, I really appreciate, we went a little bit longer, but um, I, I just love doing this. I hope that, you know, if you were here tonight and you make some big change, please, you know, drop me an email. Let me know how you're, how you're coming along or join us in the Facebook group. I get energy from your success. Well, thank you, Darla. And again, uh, if you, if anybody uh, feels like there's somebody in their life that really needs to see this presentation, uh, we did record it and it will be on the Haverford Township Free Libraries um, YouTube channel probably tomorrow. So uh, thank you, Darla. I am going to stop recording.